Come on, John. Can be in three places at once. I'm getting there. This man here is a solar system ambassador for NASA, JPL. I don't work for NASA. He does not work for NASA, but nevertheless, he's a solar system ambassador. It's a very official title. He is also an, ast an astronomy industry professional, not to be confused with a professional astronomer yet, but he officially works for the Vatican Observatory Foundation, and uh, he is going to tell us tonight about the great Michigan meteor of 2018. That I completely missed. That he completely missed because he was in the basement working on meteors. <laughs> oh, no. I think I was actually killing you right. at the time. But. Like I said, I'm Bob Chandler, I'm a solar system ambassador. I've been at Wasp Number since uh, 2011, and uh, as of uh, January 1st, I'm working full time for the Vatican Observatory Foundation. Brother Guy is my boss, essentially. So, this is the first, this is a compilation. Work on what God's been hurt. Did you guys see that? American Meteor Society put this together compilation of stuff. The American Meteor Society is a place where you can report. You can report sightings. More than 51 people heard it. 51 new people reported hearing it. And uh, it lit up seven states. It says the sonic boom was felt and heard. And uh, I, got a, I got a voicemail from Fox 2 News. By the way, who, who turned them on to me? Was that you? Um, so I listened to it and I said, what me here? So I mean, I, <laughs> I went to Twitter and uh, I, I found some videos and they called me back almost immediately. And I had a very short interview with them. They, they, were, they were on a deadline to get uh, something out by 10. I had a five minute interview with them and they, they used about a minute and a half of it. And I was quite surprised they did that. So after this, I went to bed because I was really tired. And then I got woken up by a call from the Detroit News. They had a much longer interview with me and uh, the article that they posted had, they, they talked to Bill Cook from NASA, the American Meteor Society, Narlock from here, and the USGS. So they had a very thorough article. And, uh, the things that I told the reporter from uh, the Detroit News ended up in a Washington Post article. I'm looking at it going, uh, okay. And then on Facebook, a buddy of mine from Atlanta saw the Washington Post article in his Atlanta journal. And I did a search on it this morning. This is all over the place. So it was shared quite a bit. So the American Meteor Society, they put this video together. They calculated the orbit of the meteorite that caused this. And like a lot of these things, the near-Earth objects, it spends a lot of its time way out in the asteroid belt. But as it was approaching the sun, this time the Earth got in the way. And this is pretty cool because um, you'll notice the angle. It's coming straight down at us. It was like 21 degrees off vertical, which is pretty unusual these things <laughs> and uh, it was uh, there was it was reported the American Meteor Society got 671 reports from a whole bunch of different states like I said 51 people reported sound but I know a lot more heard that like my buddy who lives over in Bloomfield Hills who said it shook his windows yes. so, 51 people in Dearborn who had their <laughs> <laughs> yes so um, this or orbiting satellite that uh, watches for lightning actually saw the flash of, of the bolide, which is pretty darn cool. And uh, the, the next day, I saw this on Twitter. Uh, <coughs> it, they, they detected falling meteorites using Doppler radar. So I think we found a way to find these now. We need to make some weatherman friends, because this is, this is the right way to do it. So, hunters were looking at meteorites on the surface of frozen lakes out by Hamburg. And uh, I actually have an old co-worker who contacted me 
and said that they were doing this, and so were three other people out on these lakes. They were using tractor-pulled sieves. She unfortunately did not find any, but a lot of people did find them. Oh, go away. And uh, a lot of smiling faces on Twitter, some very nice pieces. Obviously magnetic sitting there. This, this is just great, the sh uh, fusion crust and the shatter, but uh, I've got tons of pictures. Uh, do you know how many pieces were recovered? Or an estimate? I, I did not get an estimate. This is just beautiful. This is the fusion, uh, yeah, the fusion crust here. Shattered. This, this is just, just gorgeous pictures. So Cranbrook sent me this. Um, and speaking of meteorite hunters who went hunting, uh, Tony sent me this picture, and these are the hunters. And these are the things that they found. I'll give you a chance to look at some of these things. These are just little fragments. Um, real bad. He brought, them, he brought them to the fork club. <sighs> yep. And these are your? No, they're so These pieces are just beautiful. And the, the fusion crust here. But a lot of these, some of these things have little shatter bits, and there's a lot more of those. So clarify the composition, Bob. Um, I'll get to that. I, I've got that. So I, I told I told Tony that that's obviously damaged, and we would take it off his hands for about five dollars. Yeah, you know, me too. Count count me in on that. So um, Tony sent the pictures he sent me. Uh, this guy, let me get this. Samir Harar, Hariri. He works. He's a geologist at OCC. He did an initial analysis of of this. Now I don't even know what. Lego cast matrix are. I looked that up and the definition required looking up. So, but um, it, it has iron and olivine crystals and they believe it was an L chondrite. Chondrites are stony meteorites and the L means low iron content. That was the initial um, uh, um, definition of what this thing was. But as some slices came in, they started finding that there was a lot of iron flex in these things. And uh, John uh, Zwicky, who works here, uh, uh, sent me information that uh, it's finally it was class classified as an H chondrite, mean, meaning a high iron content and very strong attraction to metal. So here are some uh, more micrographs, some real close-ups. There's some just beautiful shots here. And some olivine, broken fusion crust. There's that matrix. There's probably some iron flex in there. Look at that. That is just beautiful. This would be olivine. And that would be olivine bits in these things. So Cranbrook here, they held an event um, a couple days on, on Saturday after the event happened. And the public was invited to bring their pieces here. John Zwicky said, they all came at once. <laughs> and, uh, so you had 400 people showing up. He said, I way did not have enough volunteers here. And he actually thinks a couple of meteorites got stolen, which it kind of stinks. But um, he confirmed several meteorites from the fall, including hunks of slag, concrete, and a couple of fall, a couple of pieces from a different fall. <laughs> and he said some people were very insistent that a rock that was obviously out of the garden, I saw it fall right in front of me. No, you didn't. <laughs> And he, he said, he had to very, very politely tell people that that's a hunk of concrete and not a meteorite. And he said there were some very unhappy people. One guy wanted him to sign a certificate of authenticity. He's like, I can't do that. <laughs> but so, um, yeah, if you, if, you, if you guys see a fireball, this is the place to report it. The American Meteor Society, they've got this form here. It's really simple. And they, it, they simply ask you, where were you standing? Where are you looking? What did you see? And they use this information to calculate the orbits and stuff. Now, the one thing I don't have in this slide was I got a call from my solar system ambassador rep. Um, I said, we have the four people from the Ford Club that went hunting for the meteorites. One of them is a solar system ambassador. And he, he went to this neighborhood, a, a one car load with four people. He got out the per, the person in that neighborhood came to him and said, what are you doing here? because they'd had some people coming there and they had to shoo them away, but the report that we got is that 10 car loads with 20 to 30 people were in this neighborhood 
And when, when people said, you can't come on my property to do this, they were uh, being pretty nasty, being vocal, and uh, um, my solar system ambassador wanted to make sure that that wasn't any of us. And no, it wasn't. But so, I, I'm pretty sure none of us would have acted like that anyway. But So that, that's pretty much it. And uh, we're hoping to see more of these things in Michigan soon. How long has it been since the last one? What, has there been one? Yeah, I heard this was number 12. Yeah. When was 11? <laughs> there was one over Kelm Missoula. There was one over Kelm Missoula in 2013 or something. I'm serious about that newscaster thing. So what do I do? Call up newscasters and say, you got access to Doppler radar? Can I put you on my call list? I saw the record on it. There was one last 10 years. I love that picture. Look at that. Iron flex everywhere. Beautiful fall. I, I heard, I read something a couple days after that about three kilograms worth of stuff had been found, but I'm, I'm sure it's gone up since then. How big was this? Hmm? How big they was said it was between uh, one to four meters, like maybe a Volkswagen size. One to four yeah. meters? Yeah, it was good size. Yeah. Holy yeah. smoke! Yeah. It was bigger than we thought. Oh, yeah. six yeah. feet. The, the, the meteorite, that was six feet, they estimated. Yeah. Two meters. Two meters. Yeah, pretty good. This is the six by six. That's, that's between one and four. <laughs> it's still pretty good size. Two, two meters, that's a giant thing. Two like meters plus or minus one. Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions other than that? Yes. And I understand they say the composition of the feldspar, white and blue feldspar that was in it, that it was very similar to the meteor that was over Jelly Bensk in Russia. Could be. that. Um, from what John's wiki said, the apparent object of this is asteroid 6 Hebe. So I'm not, I'm not sure what the composition of that is, but if he thinks this is apparent, it's probably <laughs> like this. Was this classified as an asteroid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, well, um, two meters, yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. okay. Anything above meters is considered an asteroid. What's it if it's below a meter? Meteoroid. It's always a meteoroid if it's in space. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meteoroids, asteroids, it's a Venn diagram. <laughs> Meteorite in space, meteor in the, in the atmosphere, meteorite on the ground. That's yes. It. And if it's flashing, when it comes in, it's a meteor wrong. It's a bow line that explodes. Yeah, that's what it is. There's your definition. Yeah. 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 yeah, I want that piece of this so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because where uh, Angela and I lived, that was when the first report came out, where it came in was right where we live. And, then later on, they said, no, it's, you know, farther over. Further out, uh, right. But before everybody heard the follow-up, everybody was down in our area. You go out and drive in our area, and everybody was up and walk on these private farmer's fields looking for it. And uh, I'm also solar system ambassador now, and our last session a couple days ago, they said, don't ever, ever go into private that, property. That, that, the, that this, this event was why that was brought up during the orientation session. I got a little. Yeah, but they, they contacted me because I wrote three articles about this on the VOF. They're like, oh, well, maybe you know something. I was at a convention. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't there. Yeah. I was at a science fiction convention, sorry. And uh, yeah. I was that weekend. I talked about Cassini and Mars and a bunch of stuff. It was really cool. It was but, science fiction convention. How many people here heard it? Cheryl and I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. And, and my wife saw it. Looking south out of the oh, window. Yeah, and she I saw it. Wow. Was like, what was that? She yelled it out to me. I said, I heard it. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Transform. Shook, shook the house in your room. Yeah, shook house in my room. So, snack time? Yeah. No, no final request for questions. Yeah, back there. Yeah. Any comment on the earthquake that's it wasn't an earthquake. It was a uh, uh, it was a shock wave. It was like a sonic boom. So it 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 re the sensors registered it, but it came from that way. <laughs> it didn't shake the ground. I'm just curious. That was really an earthquake. No, no, not an earthquake. The earthquake was bigger. You could call it. 
Do you recall, was there any videos with sound? What was the delay between the... Uh, I have not seen any videos with sound at all, which is very disappointing. Well, it was mostly security camera footage, and most of the time security cameras don't have sound. Oh, um, the, uh, something I didn't put in here, that, that Na the NASA All-Sky Fireball Network um, saw this thing, and they also helped calculate the orbit on these things. They're shaped like R2D2. They're about that big with a dome top. They've got a 360 degree camera. And this Bill Cook from the NASA Meteorite Office would love people to install them on the roofs of buildings. There are, there are a bunch of requirements. You've got to have power, you've got to have access to a computer, it's got to be a secure site, you've got to have a good view of the sky. But a lot of the elementary schools have these things on it. And I think I'm going to be kidding up my wife's school to put one of these things up. Michigan doesn't have a single one, and NASA would like them. So if you're interested, if you know somebody who has a place that we can put these in Michigan, get with me, because I'd like to talk to you about it. Yes? Were there any sound recorders at all? No, not that we had heard. Well, if you count the size of the gravity, I count that. Could you, could you convert that to size? Oh, I could, yeah. There's a, there's a crack. All right. All right.